Hey everyone, it's Troy from the Sprint Product Ambassador team with the Samsung Galaxy Tab S2. Today I want to highlight the Samsung Side Sync application functionality. And I'm going to do that between my Galaxy Tab S2 and my Samsung Galaxy Note 5. There are three particular features that I want to highlight. Number one, that I can transfer my photos back and forth between my tablet and my phone. The second, I can make and receive phone calls from my tablet that go through my phone. And then third, I can send and receive text messages through my tablet, through my phone as well. So first, let's talk about what SideSync is. SideSync is an application that is on Samsung devices that allows you to connect your tablet and your phone together, as well as to your computer if you, if you need to use your computer. Um, but in this demonstration, we're just going to use it between the tablet and the phone. So what SideSync allows me to do is mirror my phone screen and functionality on my tablet. So that means while my phone is charging, which it actually happens to be charging at the moment, um, I can utilize all of the functionality on my phone through my tablet without actually having to have my phone in my hand. Um, it's extremely convenient if I have my phone charging in another room because maybe I don't have multiple chargers um, or maybe I just need to step away or something like that and I brought my tablet with me. So first what you want to do is you want to find side sync on your phone as well as on your tablet. And so I'm going to show you where it is on the tablet. You just want to scroll down and you want to find it in your application tray. You just go ahead and click on side sync. What it's going to do is it's going to search for any nearby devices that have it. Um, mine is on my Samsung Galaxy Note 5 and so it's searching for it right this minute. And you can see that it connected fairly quickly to my device. And so from here, we're brought to a quick launch icon bar. Um, and what this quick launch icon area has is uh, from left to right, we have the file explorer or file manager, music files, as well as gallery. Uh, what's fun is that you can actually add multiple applications to that quick launch toolbar so that you can use some applications that are on your phone that may not be on your tablet, um, or maybe some apps that are not compatible with your tablet. Uh, one that comes to mind is Taco Bell. Um, I am an avid consumer of Taco Bell. I love Taco Bell, probably more than a lot of other people, or maybe just the same. Really, Taco Bell is kind of a love affair. So, Taco Bell's app does not work on tablets, or at least on this tablet, uh, but it does on my phone. So what I can do is I can actually, if I want to order, uh, you know, make an order with Taco Bell or something like that, um, I can click the plus icon, and again, it's not specifically restricted to Taco Bell. Um, I'm just using it as a reference because I do know that that is one app that does not work on my tablet. Uh, so what you can do is click on the plus icon, and you can scroll through all your applications, and since we mentioned Taco Bell, we want to scroll down to that particular application, and just go ahead and click on it, and then you just click add in the bottom right-hand corner. From what you can see on this screen is actually in the top left hand corner, it says however many out of nine. So what that means is I've actually got four applications out of nine total quick access applications that I can select. So for demonstration, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on a couple more applications so you can kind of see what's going on here. So we'll go ahead and click up to the nine. Um, we'll go ahead and hit add. And so as you can see, it places them in the quick launch toolbar. And from here, what I can do is I can click on the app and it'll open it up for me. It's just a very quick access to that. So for example, we'll just click on the Taco Bell app. Um, it opens it up on the phone and it'll bring you to your locked screen on your phone. So you want to go ahead and unlock that using whatever method you have. Um, and if you've signed in, which I haven't yet, um, you can utilize that application as if you would on your tablet. So, or as you, as, excuse me, as if you would on your phone. So again, extremely convenient when you have an application that does not work on a tablet that happens to work on a phone only. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and back out of that. What's nice is in the bottom, you can see that I have the, the multi-window button, the home button, and the back button, which would be the same buttons I have on my device. So I'll go ahead and hit the back button here. Uh, to get back to what I was doing, in the upper right-hand corner, you can see that the quick launch toolbar icon is up there. So if you go ahead and click on that, it'll bring you back to where you were. Uh, so from here, like I said, there was specifically three functions that I wanted to show you. Sending in, or excuse me, transferring pictures from the tablet or from the phone to the tablet. Uh, sending and receiving phone calls as well as sending and receiving text messages. So what we're going to do is do some pictures really quick. So we're going to tap the gallery icon on the quick launch toolbar. And that's going to open up that. We're going to go ahead and get back out of whatever picture I had open here. And so from here, we're just going to back it up. 
So what we can do is it shows you your gallery as if you were looking at your phone. Just, you know, pretty straightforward. Uh, maybe there's a picture I want to transfer. So I want to transfer the picture that's the, the one of me and my Michael Myers mask. So we're going to go ahead and open that up. Um, to transfer that file from my phone to the tablet, um, what you want to do is you want to long press on the particular file you want. If you have multiple files within the folder, uh, so if I had six pictures in here, I could select all six of those um, and drag them over. So since I only have one in this particular folder, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select it like I have done. To transfer it, you're just going to drag it and drop it into your tablet. And so what you'll do is you'll just long press on the photo and you will drag it over to the tablet and let go. You're going to get a notification in the bottom that says saved inside sync, as you just saw that popped up. Um, that's just telling you that the transfer was completed successfully. Uh, if you're going to transfer videos back and forth, just keep in mind that it does take a little bit of extra time for videos depending on the size um, of that file. So you might not see the transfer go through as quickly, but you can see it from the notification tray. Uh, so if you slide down, you can actually see it says one file received from my device. So you're actually able to see that come from there. Um, and what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and go back. And what I was showing you earlier was the side sync button. I didn't really call it out specifically. So what we can do is you can see it, it's right up here and you can see it's right there. Uh, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and click on that and it's gonna bring us back to our quick launch toolbar and you can see all the apps again left and right. Uh, what's also nice is you're, you're able to minimize this into a much smaller and easy to use um, icon that you can maneuver around your screen. So what you do is you just want to click right there on the minimize button um, and what you can do is it'll minimize it into a small little icon that you can maneuver around your screen so that way you can use your device. So now what we want to do is we want to go in and actually see the picture that we transferred from the phone to the tablet. And to do that, we want to open up gallery, which happens to be right here on my device. And we're going to go ahead and open that up. And as you can see, there is a, there's a folder labeled side sync right there. Um, anything that you've transferred via side sync is going to go into that particular folder. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and open that up. And now we can see that we have the picture and it opens up just fine. Um, and also keep in mind, we're going to go ahead and back up out of that. Uh, but go ahead and keep in mind as well that uh, the quality is not degraded when you transfer it back and forth. So it's not like sending a text message or excuse me, a picture message to somebody. Um, it's as if you just transferred it directly through like an SD card or a thumb drive or something like that. So that, that's a nice handy feature. So now I'm able to take that picture. I'm able to put it on Facebook. I'm able to put it on Instagram um, or anything else that I might use on my tablet. Maybe I can edit it, do whatever I need to do from there as well. So that's one feature. The next feature that I want to go over is uh, sending and receiving phone calls. Um, so if you ever want to get back to the device, because maybe you've been using it, uh, you've, you've been using an application, maybe you've been reading a book or something like that on your, your tablet, but you want to go back to your phone for something to make a phone call, we're going to click the icon wherever you've moved it um, that is side sync. And mine happens to be over here in the upper right hand corner. So we're going to go ahead and tap that. And it's going to open us up to our quick launch toolbar one more time. Uh, to open up the phone screen, because you can, as we saw, I did not have phone as a quick launch icon. So what you want to do is you want to open your phone by clicking the phone icon in the upper right hand corner of the side sync toolbar. And once you click on that, it's going to open up to your screen on your phone. We're going to go ahead and unlock the device. Push the home key. Uh, we want to hit phone. Uh, what we can do from here is, again, we can use this as a phone. We can use the m embedded microphone and speakers that are on the Galaxy Tab S2 uh, to utilize it to make and receive those phone calls through our phone. So it's connected via Wi-Fi Direct, so there's no quality issues there. Um, you have a direct connection between your tablet and your phone, uh, so there's no issues there. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and call my voicemail so you can see it as an example. And in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see... Okay, so now that I've demonstrated how to send and receive a phone call, um, I also want to go ahead and send and receive a text message. And so to do that, we just want to open up the messaging application or whatever messaging application you like to use, but I just happen to use the text messaging. Um, and what you'll do is you'll open up any text message and as you can see, there it is. We want to just tap in the area where you would send and receive the text message and it pops up a keyboard. 
Uh, the keyboard that pops up is the default, which is the floating keyboard. Now, what's convenient about the floating keyboard is it allows you to maneuver the keyboard around the screen as well as the screen of your phone so that it's more convenient for you to be able to send and receive your text message. And so if we go ahead and do that here, we've got that. Um, but just keep in mind that when you're using this, uh, the autocomplete functionality as well as the autocorrect um, and in addition, the swipe functionality does not function when you're using this keyboard. Uh, so just keep that in mind when you're sending and receiving your text messages or if you're using it for email or any other sort of means. With the text messaging as well, you can change the style of keyboard you want to, to make it more convenient for you. So what you can do is you can tap on the keyboard icon that's next to the space bar, which is right here, um, and that'll allow you to change the type of keyboard. Uh, the only thing is, is when you're clicking on that button, you may not see a keyboard, you may see an emoji icon, or you may see a settings icon. It's all dependent upon what you used last. Uh, so to access the other features, what you would do is just long press on it, and it'll bring up all of your options. And so from here, we can tap on keyboard, and it gives you normal floating and split keyboard. So split keyboard is extremely convenient um, if you want to be able to type long ways on your device. Um, however, what I like to use is the floating keyboard because if we use the normal keyboard, it takes up most of the screen and now you know, as you can see, you can't see the phone or the message that you're replying to. Uh, so it makes it slightly inconvenient. So I just recommend using the floating keyboard because it's a little bit more, again, convenient. Uh, we're going to go ahead and back out of this. now that we're all backed out. Uh, one other feature that I want to highlight, and it wasn't one of my specific features, but uh, it is something that I just thought about which I found to be extremely useful. Uh, there may be times where you have your phone with you, uh, where you want to take a picture, and maybe you're going to have your tablet also, because of course it's going to only work if you have your tablet. Um, and you want to use your tablet as a viewfinder. Maybe you're, you're propping your phone up somewhere, um, and you don't want to touch it, because maybe you don't want to knock it down while you're trying to take that picture. Uh, so what you can do is you can actually use SideSync to be able to utilize your camera on your phone as a viewfinder. So for this example, I'm just gonna place my camera, I'm gonna place it in my window uh, here in my office, so that way you can kinda see what I'm doing here. Um, I'm gonna open up the camera on my Galaxy Note 5 through SideSync so that I could use it as a viewfinder. If you have a Galaxy Note 5, a Galaxy S6, an S6 Edge, um, or one of those newer devices where you can double tap the home button to open up the camera, then you can go ahead and double tap the home key that you see here at the bottom um, and that should open up your camera just like it would. If you do not have that functionality, uh, then you would need to navigate to your camera application. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and double tap the home button. A little bit faster than that, obviously. So there you go. Now you can see that my camera is now mirrored through side sync onto my device. Um, and I can use it as a viewfinder. Uh, you can see here that it's not really that convenient to use it as a viewfinder because it does put it in portrait mode when you're kind of needing it in landscape mode. Uh, so what you can do is you've actually got a couple of options. You can adjust the screen by going into the full screen mode by tapping that button right there. And what that'll do is it'll expand what you're seeing on your phone into full screen. Um, and as you can see here, it's still not very convenient. So side sync allows you to rotate the device screen by clicking this button here. So it puts it from portrait into landscape for you so that you have a little bit better uh, view of that. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to tap on that now. And so there you go. Now you can see that uh, my phone that's sitting in the window through my office, you can actually see it right here. You can snap a picture if you want. I'll go ahead and move the camera so you can kind of get an idea. And so basically it's almost like using it as a snake if you were trying to get something out of your drain or anything like that. So it's really convenient to be able to use it this way. Like I said, maybe if your phone is sitting somewhere uh, and you don't want to knock it over if you happen to tap on it, or maybe uh, you haven't utilized the settings for like the three to five second delay when you're using that. Um, a multitude of reasons why you might want to use this. Um, probably not something you're going to use all the time, but it's still kind of a nice feature to have. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this back to normal view so that I can use the phone and I'm going to shrink it down. And there we go. So. What we went over today was the ability to send and receive phone calls um, through SideSync on your tablet and your mobile device, how to send and receive text messages back and forth, 
um, as well as how to transfer files, so pictures, and you can transfer videos, you can transfer like Word documents, PowerPoint files, uh, whatever's in your phone, how to transfer those from your phone to your tablet and vice versa. So SideSync is a very convenient application that allows you to control another device from another device without having to have two devices in your hand. Um, and again, I find that extremely convenient uh, when my phone is charging and I wanna use my phone, but it's sitting in it and it's just inconvenient to use. And so I can just use my tablet to control both, both items. Uh, so that's my video. Hopefully you learned something new about SideSync. Uh, maybe you haven't used SideSync and you were curious about it, so now you know. Um, if you do use SideSync, go ahead and drop a comment below so that I can see what you're using it for and maybe it's something that I haven't thought about or something I haven't used yet. I'm always happy to find new ways to use SideSync. Um, and if you learned something from this video as well, let me know. Um, I want to know if my information is helpful to you. Um, until next time, thank you guys and thanks for watching.